Alrighty, guys, Friday night here in Melbourne. Now, normally, I would be lighting myself a little fire, putting a bit of music on, maybe watching the AFL footy, the Aussie rules, but instead, no. I'm here talking to you about this stuff. Foam, bloody foam. I am sick to death of foam, but we need to talk about it because from what I'm seeing online on the Facebook groups and the forums, there is a whole lot of confusion going on and it's not your fault, it's Philips's fault. They have not given you adequate information and that's my job to give you the information so that you can make the good informed decisions that from what I can see, you're not making. So what I'm seeing is this so far, I'm seeing comments like, I haven't seen any bits of black foam in my humidification chamber, so I'm okay. I don't use an ozone machine, so I'm okay. I've been using my machine for three years and haven't had any problems, I'm okay. I get it. You all love your Philips CPAP machines. You use them every night and they've become part of your life. But we really need to take this seriously. And the reason is because it is serious. Now, you haven't been given all the information. This is information that your physician receives. You're not privileged to it, although you should be. And hopefully after hearing this information, you'll go, Nick, you know what? You're right. Oh, I, I need to consider this. I need to talk to my doctor about continuing to use my CPAP machine. Before we get into this, I just want to give you a real heads up here. I put up a little poll on the YouTube channel, which was how long do you think it's going to take to replace and repair all these machines? And I put up one month, two month, how long is a piece of string? And the answer is how long is a piece of string? The estimates at the moment is one year. And many think that is an underestimate. One year to fix this issue. So I just wanted to give you that straight off the bat. This is gonna be a long road back for all you Philips users out there. So you need to know that. Now, many of you will know the basics about this recall and about the phone breaking down and all that sort of stuff. But this is some stuff that you might not know, okay? So listen up. There are two potential hazards outlined in the safety notification for the affected devices. Now, the first one is obviously the foam degradation, but this is the important part. The absence of visible particles does not mean the foam breakdown has not already begun. Lab analysis of the degraded foam reveals the presence of potentially harmful chemicals, including toluene diamine, toluene diocyanate, and diethylene glycol. Now, I'm gonna talk about those three chemicals first. Let's start with the first one. Tol, 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 <laughs> Toluene, toluene diamine. Me fail English? That's impossible. Now this is a chemical that was banned from being used in hair dye. After extensive scientific research, the European Commission concluded that it cannot be considered safe for hair coloring. This chemical, you can't even put on your hair follicles. It's going into your lungs. All right, that's number one. The second one, toluene diacyanate, a powerful irritant to the mucous membranes of the eyes, gastrointestinal and respiratory tract. Death from severe asthma has been reported. Nasal congestion, dry nose, sore throat, cold-like symptoms, cough, shortness of breath, wheezing and chest tightness are all included as symptoms. Please see your physician. That's number two. Number three, diethylene glycol. Inhalation exposure can cause irritation of the mucous membranes and respiratory discomfort and cough, all right? So that one doesn't sound too bad. So they're the three chemicals that you're exposed to due to the potential breakdown of the foam, but there's more. And now the number two hazard, and this is the big one, I think. Volatile organic compounds, VOCs, chemical emissions from foam. Lab testing performed for and by Philips has also identified the presence of VOCs, these volatile organic compounds, which may be emitted from the sound abatement foam component of the affected devices. Standard testing identified two compounds which may be emitted from the foam that are outside the safety thresholds, dimethyldiazine and phenyl 2,6-BIS, dimethyl methylpropyl. That sounds shit. All right, so I really need to break this down for you all. So basically what's happened is this. 
Philips has gone and grabbed a brand new Dream Station one off the shelf, never been used before, and they've hit the on button. And then they're measuring the air, you know, the chemical composition of the air from the output. And what they've found is that the air from day one contains these volatile organic compounds, these VOCs, and they're outside the safety thresholds from day one. And they're also saying that this can continue for the life of the machine. That's fucked, all right? These are toxic carcinogenic compounds outside the safety range. This is why we need to take this seriously. This is why they have said, stop using your machines. So all of you out there right now who are going, oh, I haven't seen any particles. Oh, I, I feel fine. No, this is what's happening. Now let's talk about the potential harm. And I'm not trying to scare you guys, all right? I know this is really distressing and you need to talk about this with your doctor about you know, if you need to continue treatment, if you're worried about continuing treatment, this is stuff you need to talk about. So VOCs may cause irritation of the airway, inflammation, and this may be particularly important for patients with underlying lung disease or reduced cardiopulmonary reserve. COPD, um, if you've got asthma, things like that. The potential risks of chemical exposure due to off-gassing include headache, dizziness, irritation, eye, nose, respiratory tract, skin, hypersensitivity, nausea, vomiting, toxic and carcinogenic effects. And that's it guys. This is the facts, all right? This is the information being provided by Philips to the physicians. It's not Gary on the Facebook page, it's the information for the physicians. And the information is saying that the foam is releasing gases above safe levels that are toxic and carcinogenic and it's doing it from day one and it continues for the life of the machine. So quit the bullshit, quit all the jargon on Facebook and on the forums, here's the information, you have it now, you have the chemicals, you've got really serious sleep apnea, talk to your doctor about you know, the best way forward, but that's the information. All right, now I wanna to talk to you about the Dream Station 2 foam, so I'm gonna pull over my workbench and we're gonna discuss that. All right, so first, this here's the foam of the Dream Station 1, this black polyester polyurethane foam. It is durable, guys. I, look, it is freaking durable. Now here's the foam of the Dream Station 2. All right, it's, a whole lot more porous. All right, I've taken it out and it's not as durable. Watch this, see that? Look at this. Now, did you see how easy that was to pull out and break up this foam? Now, here's why I wanted to show you this. I think Philips is using your So Clean and your ozone generators as a smoke screen as a bit of a scapegoat to divert attention away from the fact that from day one, that foam is bad foam to begin with. Because from day one, we know that it's already releasing unsafe levels of gases that are toxic and carcinogenic. So I don't think it really matters about the ozone. If it did matter, they wouldn't make this new foam that breaks down. When the old foam, is super resilient. It's, it's really hard to break. Look at it, it's super strong. So the fact that they've kept the foam in the exact same spot, still in the exact same casing, means that it doesn't really have anything to do with the breakdown of the foam. It purely has to do with the chemical composition of the foam. Polyester-based polyurethane foam. It's not good, Google it. Okay, so this is my Dream Station 1 turbine casing that I did the operation on. And normally you have your polyurethane foam sort of jammed in there. That's all sealed up. And I made these two incisions and then took out the foam and then I taped them both back up again. What you wanna do if you are gonna do the surgery, like I've done here on the Dream Station 2, is you wanna make your incision on the inside wall where the turbine goes. So the turbine normally sits in there. You wanna do it on the inside wall. You don't wanna do it on the top wall here. 
The reason being is if you do it on the inside wall, so you take that piece out and then you take that piece out, what you can do, this is in the Dream Station 1 of course, not the Dream Station 2, when you put your, when you put your turbine back in, you can grab your turbine casing, put that on top, and then that seals it down so it's airtight. You don't have to seal the holes up like I did because it's all inside the turbine casing, you see? So basically what's gonna happen is this. All of you with Dream Station 1 machines are going to get a new casing like this, but instead of having this black polyurethane foam inside here, you're gonna have a new one that's gonna have the snowflake foam inside. And that is the fix. But that fix is going to take a very, very long time. All right, they still, have even, they still haven't even got regulatory approval yet. But once they do get that, we're, we're talking a year at the least for the fix. All right, and that's an underestimate. So you guys really need to consider right now your loyalty to Philips. I mean, is it worth waiting around, waiting for this new foam that looks to me like it's pretty shit anyway, giving you a new casing, waiting for them to put it in your machine, or do you just go and grab yourself another machine, a ResMed, a Fisher & Paykel, there's the Vilbus, there's a lot of other machines. I would dump Philips. They are not a good company. Go and do your research. Look at history, you don't have to go back too far. Go back 10 years and have a look what the FDA has done, shutting down factories, looking at the complaints. They are as dodgy as it comes. And that's it guys, look, I've given you all the information I can possibly give you on Foamgate. I've had a gut full of foam, excuse the pun. For those of you that have been with me for a long, long time, I know you know I'm not out to get you on this. I know you know I have your best interests at heart. I'm giving you the honest information. There's a lot of new people to the channel who don't know me, who don't know what I'm about. I know I can be a little bit confronting and I, it looks like I'm stirring the pot a lot of the time, but I'm not. I'm on your side. I don't get anything out of this. I'm not sitting here on a Friday night for the fun of it, okay? I don't enjoy it. I'm doing it for you. I'm looking out for you guys. So please show a little bit of respect yeah, look out for one another. That's what I'm about. That's what you're about. Join the Facebook group if you want. That's a really good group. A lot of supportive people. Join the newsletter. I'll keep you up to date. And subscribe to the channel if you want to. But good luck, guys. All right? It's going to be a long road. And I wish you all the best. Take care. Bye.